Hey, what's going on guys? Brandon here with Texas Plinking. I don't really think I need much of an intro. I have a riot shield. We're gonna go ahead and shoot it, see how tough it is. This specifically is an RTS tactical shield. And I believe, I can't really necessarily find it on the website. I believe it's rated for handguns. So we've got quite a few handguns that it should stop and some that I question, and then we've got some rifles. Once we punch through this, and I've got some interesting ways to try to damage it. We'll just see what's up with the glass and ear. Should all be pistol rated. Then we're gonna go ahead and move on to this. Real quickly, RTS Tactical, if you're watching this, I have to apologize. They sent me this expecting me to shoot it, but then when I got it, I feel too bad for it. It is too pretty to shoot. What I will do is just take one of the plates out because that's all we really need to see what it's uh, capable of. But this multicam plate carrier, I just think it's super cool. So we'll rip one of these plates out. That should be able to stop some pretty high caliber rifles. So we're gonna to go ahead and test that. All right, now before we get shooting real quick, thanks to our longtime sponsor, that's the Noran Desert Institute, online schooling for gunsmithing on particular firearms, which is pretty cool, but on broad stuff as well, shooting sports management and many other courses. Link in the description to SDI. Again, that's the Noran Desert Institute. You get certified on some courses there. They have several different funding options. You guys can make a career out of the subject of shooting. So that's pretty cool. Again, link in the description. Always appreciate their support. We're gonna go ahead and start off on that shield with the 22 long rifle, as you do. This in particular is a Smith & Wesson Performance Center Victory 22 with a carbon fiber prettiness, all that stuff, Vortex Viper on top. That should do it, but we right, got some more rounds. All right, so it looks like we hit here and see all these, oh, it's kind of decently sharp, all that little fragments there. So pretty much the way this is designed as well as plates that we'll see later, is it pretty much gets shot here. There's actually a clean hole and then it frags out here so you don't get pelted and it's not like a steel target where it just has a bunch of shrapnel everywhere. I just realized also we kind of shot it right here to where if there is any warping, I won't be able to tell. So maybe we'll kind of favor the edges for now and we'll save the glass for something a little bit later. This may look familiar to you and we're no, we're not jumping to 7.5 FK right away. I actually just got the nine millimeter barrel for my FK Bruno PSD. Whoa, that's interesting. All right, I kind of forgot about favoring the edges here, but hit right here, a lot more fragmented stuff. And okay, that was kind of on the edge. A little bit of a warp here, not a specific poke. You would be good with nine mil thus far. All right, 45 ACP, naturally we're gonna do it at 1911. But uh, new gun alert, check out what's in here. So I've had a Smith & Wesson Performance in her 1911 and I like the stainless steel with the blue. So I kept that. I got another one and sent it off to Titanium Gun to get this Gold titanium nitrided coating. No, it's not real gold because that scratch is too easy and I don't have that deep of pockets. Should probably also mention, change out the grips because I think gold and blue grips would look a little strange. So black grips, G10 grips, I believe, from Lock Grips, L-O-K. Ooh, it looks like I'm in Call of Duty from my point of view. Darn it. All right, well, it's got some growing pains. Mind you, I'm shooting ammo from a brand I've never heard about because availability is as you know right now, and I have not cleaned it. But hopefully, we can get these two to cycle. Let's just put them on the rocks. Okay, cool. So, it's all good. All right, so that kind of went right around here. I see some string kind of poking out, so it might have had a couple things fly out. For the most part, it contained it. Put a good little dent here. Let's go ahead. Tell the truth here. Well, it didn't go out the other side. Uh, not too much of a dent, a little bit more than nine mil. All right, back with the FK Bruneau PSD. Now, 10 millimeter. This thing is a total convertible. We got 10 mil right now. Let's go ahead and put it kind of bottom left corner here. Good warp on it, 10 mil full metal jacket. Nice little warp, um, but unsurprisingly, it stopped it. I should mention, this shield isn't necessarily cheap. It's not from wish.com. If you want one, it runs you about $999. So it better be stopping this stuff. Tell you what, I'm getting a little bit impatient now. So I've got two rounds of 7.5 FK. It's hollow point though, but it still packs a really good punch. Sounds like a 44 Magnum's going off. So let's go ahead and put one somewhere on where we've been traditionally shooting. And if it stops it, we'll put the other one right in the glass and uh, see if it stops that. Did I hit right around the bolt? Oh no, top of that. Oh boy, okay, that's a warp right there. And that, since that's a hollow point, I mean, I'm feeling stuff up here and down here. I think I hold, I don't know, I think slightly, well, let's just send it. Oh yeah, ah, that's nice. I don't feel anything. 
just a little bit of plastic I couldn't remove, but smooth. All right, the glass lives to see a 44 Magnum. I've got a good one to show. All right, it's another new gun alert. Come over here, check this out. Smith & Wesson box. I believe that's standard on what they call the classic series. Newly made guns based off some classic designs. That is a Model 29 made famous from Dirty Harry. That is a pretty gun, blued uh, frame and barrel and all with a wood grip, kind of bronze logo. Very, very pretty. Let's go ahead and get these two lined up here. Let's go bottom left. Gotta say, 44 Magnum tore it up pretty good. Look at this hole right here, actually. So, um, yeah, quite a bit shot out the bottom. Not that big of a deal for a shield. All right, oh, it's muddy here. Once again, don't believe it came through. Actually, definitely didn't. It just uh, had nowhere else to go, so it shot down. I'm sure if I hit up here, it probably would have absorbed it all. Whoa, what happened there? Yeah, I went way low. What a marksman. Um, in any case, did it stop it? Oh, <laughs> whoa, that's pretty telling. Okay, so yes, it technically stopped it. You might have then dealt with shrapnel here though. That's an interesting spot to hit it on. Wow, that just like poured glass. Look at all, look at the white all along the side. It's like a waterfall. Um, wow, that's crazy. Proof real quick. A mm, little bit of dust, not cutting myself, no. Pretty smooth, actually, all things considered. Well, if you're subscribed, surprise, surprise, Gold Desert Eagle 50 AE. Um, yeah, and we did two shots just because ammo's so cheap right now. All right. Oh, it was a little low once more, but good enough. That's a chunk. So it had a little bit of metal and glass slow it down. All right, moment of truth. Oh, okay. That's that last little retaining wall there. What in the world happened? Did it shoot out the bottom? Cause there's no like telling hole. Well, we know when we hit center, it didn't go through. That doesn't look as telling. If it was fresh, probably wouldn't have happened, but you know I've got a 500 Magnum, so we're gonna do it again. All right, so that's the 500 Smith & Wesson out of the Stubby Boy. The Performance Center three and a half inch barrel, I believe it is, 500 Magnum. Oh boy, here we go. I'm not gonna wait, let's go ahead straight to glass. Oh yeah, all right, that's 500 Magnum. That's a good glass hit. That's 500, center hit. It just feels like mush right now. Oh yeah, all right, well, starting off with the glass, it had gone through. I can just tell by that warping right there. As far as center, it's not punching through right here, but if you feel that, that is firm warping. All right, that's all I can do with that adhesive, but there's 50 AE and 500 Magnum somewhere here. So it is stopping it. The glass, on the other hand, isn't as happy, especially when it's been hit by what we've hit it with thus far. All right, before we move on to the next gun, real quick thanks to ETS, that's Elite Tactical Systems, longtime sponsor of the channel. They make really cool speed loaders for multiple different caliber uh, and mag configurations, as well as cool translucent magazines. So check them out. But again, thanks ETS. Let's go ahead and move on to the next rifle. I could be wrong, but this should be the end of that shield. Um, this should go right through the main part. So this is a 5.56. Good old M16A3 look here. Um, complete rifle built by Bear Creek Arsenal, so it's more uh, economic, well under a grand uh, when they're in stock anyway. But 556 rifle. Ooh, all right, well, yeah. That's what I thought would happen. Straight through, kind of tore up this, but that doesn't matter. It did go through. So RTS Tactical calls this the active shooter kit. As you see it, it's about 400 bucks, which may not seem as economical compared to other stuff it is. But the main thing, the plates, uh, rifle rated, green tip 5.56, so it should have no problem with uh, FMJs. The plates themselves are 85 bucks each. And here it is. That right there is what should stop 5.56 green tip. Uh, pretty nasty stuff. And it's 85 bucks. Whoo! Whoa. All right. Starting off pretty strong. Wow, that's interesting. What is that constructed out of? Anywho, put a pretty good hole in here. So it looks like it would be worse from the back. Eh, a little, little warp, nothing too crazy. Once again, new gun alert. You know I love M1As. Every one I've had is a 762 by 51 or 308. This is a 6.5 Creedmoor. Pretty cool. 
22 inch barrel stainless barrel there's the round 6.5 creed more very very cool i've actually already got experience with this i'm trying to collect enough footage to make a full review on it so expect that sooner than later but uh my only impressions with this so far were zeroing it at 100 shooting it at a thousand and now about to shoot a plate i like this gun quite a bit Whew. all right looks like we're about 50 percent of the way through it doesn't really help for the case of the plate that I shot right around where the 5.56 was, but it's smooth. This is a Barrett M Rad chamber in 300 wood mag. I made a full review on this, so if you guys are interested, check that out. I don't think it's rated for that, but yeah, why not? All right. I don't know why I'm grouping it so tightly. Not helping uh, this thing. I think it was, I don't know. Oh, did that go through? All right. Well, in fairness, I definitely hit it where it was 50% already shot. So let's do it again. Just while we're here, put it a little lower end, try to get some uncompromised area. Oh, it kind of just exploded, but all right. Yeah, no, okay, so technically it stopped it. You can see that's actually where it went right here. And it went as far down as here. So 300 wind mag was stopped technically, it's just you know, in pieces. If it was in the carrier, it would have probably bunched it together a little bit more. Um, so I guess that's on me. $85 plate, mind you. Uh, technically, yes to a 300 wood mag if it was the first shot and it wasn't frayed, but meh. You can make your own conclusion to that. You know what I just realized though? No, the video's not over yet. Let's put the shield back here, put a little bit of binary explosives on it, and uh, then we'll be done. Let's go for the lower one first. Oh, that was like a nice little firework. That's cool. Well, that will just about do it for this video. A thousand dollar RTS tactical riot shield. Uh, pretty impressive actually, considering the size and the weight, not too bad. Uh, yeah, binary explosives don't really seem to phase anything. They're kind of just like big fireworks or whatever. Um, then we stepped over to the $85 more so economic plate for their plate carrier. And uh, these are pretty cool. So if you're interested, uh, check them out, RTS Tactical. I appreciate them sending this to me for me to destroy. That's always kind of fun. But uh, yeah, and of course, thanks to ETS and SDI for sponsoring this video. And I'll see you guys next time. Take care.